Hi everybody and welcome to Jobs in Showbiz. My name is Olivia and today we're here with a costume designer, Meredith. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, so a costume designer has to arrange fittings, you deal with suppliers, you break down the scripts. So there's a lot that goes into it. You have to have a very good work ethic. So I admire that. Thank you. Meredith has done everything from Gossip Girl to Rain. Uh, when looking on your website, I saw you did some fashion. So is that how things started off for you? And when did you break into the world of film and television? Well, I moved to New York City when I graduated school in Santa Barbara, and I did initially start in fashion there, um, which is you know one of the main industries in New York. So that's how I got my foot in the door. But my interest was really in film over fashion. Um, and when I kind of realized that you could do both in costume design, uh, it, it was really became quickly apparent that that's what I wanted to make a career out of. So I started out as an intern um, okay. in New York, mm -hmm. and because it has kind of a smaller, um, you know, film community there, it's pretty easy to work your way up. So I went um, and then began assisting a variety of costume designers there, which led me to Gossip Girl, where I was the assistant designer, and then that's um, so awesome! I love that show. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. A lot a of one, right? work went into that one, but it was yeah. really, really a fun and uh, experience, and I learned so much. Um, and then that brought me to design a show called Heart of Dixie, and then um, which was also in the CW. And then after that was Rain. So I guess the CW loves you. They, they do. <laughs> I love the CW too. What about um, like just transitioning from such a show like Gossip Girl to all these modern costumes to something like Rain, where it's like Renaissance and. Medieval times. I mean, it's funny, some some of it's similar. Um, you're still, you know, creating a look head to toe. It's definitely can be easier uh, when it's contemporary because you can shop everything um, in the stores and, yes. and online or getting promotional pieces from uh, designers, which was a big part of Gossip Girl. Uh, but on Rain, mostly everything we, we make or we rent. Um, there is definitely some shopping off the rack that I do as well, but it's not nearly to the extent of what Gossip Girl was. Right. What about theater? Have you ever dabbled into that? Theater is one thing I just Besides some drama school <laughs> when I was younger, I skipped the theater skipped world. It. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So when did you know that this was your world and you were meant to do this? Well, I think it was I, I, in college. I went to film school and um, I remember kind of watching some of the bigger like films that they showed us. Nashville randomly was one that I, I remember thinking like, wow, somebody dressed. Yeah all of these characters and all of these backgrounds and once I realize I, I feel like a lot of people don't realize don't even or maybe do, they just don't think that like someone dressed all these it's people the but it's to, you know yeah. Yeah. you just which is great because it should appear so natural on screen that you aren't really thinking about that and I remember when I really realized that and that it was a job I was like oh that's really fascinating and then once I moved to New York and I worked on my first film I was like this is this is it this is what I want to do Perfect. and uh, yeah I was really I think fortunate in that way that I figured it out pretty quickly it's a good feeling too <laughs> <laughs> what about the hiring process um, is it an interview style do you have to be submitted by someone is it possible to find work by yourself yeah you know it can be hard like any uh, job in the industry of you're basically a freelancer and and one job comes from you know someone just recommending you usually is what it is but once yeah. you start um, you know making a name for yourself and getting more of an establishment in the industry um, and working with different directors and producers it definitely becomes a little bit more you know easy to find a job from one to another um, you know and, and interviews can vary from no interview just to like yeah you have the job to you know very detailed character boards with illustrations yeah, and samples. fabrics yeah. and everything and you really have to be prepared and you have to put a lot of work and time and energy and love into that um, so they kind of run the gamut of easy walk-ins to to really kind of fighting and, and making sure that they know that you're up for the challenge obviously a costume designer creates the look for each character do you ever talk to your actors or performers about your ideas and maybe get their input 
Yes, 100%. And it's it's a collaboration. And I felt like that from the beginning. And that's how I was trained. And I, I believe in that because ultimately, I am here to create the character um, with the creatives, with the actor, right. with the director, with the producers, with hair and makeup and the production designer. Yeah, and it's a team. It's a team. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, for an actor, you know, you have to feel that your costume supports your character. And if you feel uncomfortable or, well, uncomfortable, we can sometimes <laughs> manage being right, on right. rain. But if you feel like like the costume is distracting you from your performance or from the character, then then, right. then that's not that's not a good thing. Right. And and I'm definitely willing to work with actors um, on on making that happen. And I understand too. I also do have some sympathy, sympathy. for <laughs> you know stilettos and corsets all day. So if that's not gonna gonna help you, if it's gonna hurt you, then we'll get rid of them. Fair enough. I know sometimes it's hard to breathe with all those corsets, and yeah. the set's not an hour, it's maybe like 16 hour days. Yes. Is it true, I read somewhere, that when you're on set and there's a costume for the first time, that the costume designer has to be there to make sure everything kind of... Yeah, so that's called establishing. So um, what I do is anytime we see a costume for the first time, um, I go to base camp and I will dress the actor and make sure all the little pieces are there and you know because the volume of the cast and the costumes on rain I don't always get to then go to set and make sure it's good um, I sometimes I get to sometimes I have to rush back to the office for right. a fitting or a meeting because so. sometimes I see sometimes I don't I'm like what makes this day special yes usually what makes it special are my women with lots of different pieces yes. because and the men are special too <laughs> but usually men the men important. just have like a doublet and a shirt right. and the women have like 25 different yes. things going on and so they take a little bit more of a particular you know finesse and do you take into consideration say someone's hair color when kind of yes. doing the mood board yeah eye color definitely so for sure that has a hundred percent you know, body, body shape, body type, age, hair, like it really helps us once we see the actor and meet the actor, kind of get a feel on who this character is going to be because it could definitely change. Well, thank you, Meredith. My and pleasure. And if you. there was another job you could do on set, what would it be and why? I think if there was another job, I would l love to be writing. Um, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's incredibly challenging. Yes. <laughs> um, this is in a completely fantasy world uh, because I don't think I really have what it takes to sit there and the discipline to, to be to be a writer and I, I do love my job but I think there's something um, really kind of brilliant uh, about I think TV writers it's 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 a big it's a big challenge and it's really interesting to see where they take different storylines so I would that's what I think it would be. And you're creating, and it's kind of what you're doing, just in another element. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, thank guys, you. for watching. Bye, thanks. So, Meredith, what's the difference between a crown, a tiara, and a headpiece? Okay, so this is this is a crown, and um, a crown is something that would be, you know, the whole circumference, go all the way around. This is a men's crown, so I'll try it on you. Probably be too big. It's probably going to be a bit big on you, okay. Yeah. Um, this would be a tiara. This is something that you know usually just kind of stands up on the front. This is what we most commonly use on rain. It's easy to put on for the most part, um, and kind of really sells the the look. Quite nice. Yeah, the um, these are halos. These are trickier uh, because you kind of have to have a big bigger head <laughs> or a big hairdo. Right. Um, but these are to quite hold. pretty too. And then something like this, I would just call a headpiece, where it's neither really, it's just a nice kind of decorative yeah. Simple. bit. So um, we use so many on Rain that yeah, we have to have a quite variety, a stock. But I guess it depends on the character, right? Like I would see like, I know Kenna's not here, but I would see her in yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's so Kenna. That's and what this we is like maybe more Mary or Catherine. Yeah, yeah. This is like a, a good Elizabeth probably. Yeah. This could be maybe something we use on uh, King Charles. And this one maybe? Claude. Claude. Pink. Princess, yes. Yeah. Well, thanks, Meredith. <laughs> sure. Hope you guys learned something. <laughs>